Here at HIDS 15, did you know that we were in the golden age of YSTR genotyping? What do you mean by the golden age? I mean that we, after so many years of collaborative, intensive work on the Y chromosome typing, we are now uh, in a situation that we have really the best chemistry, very sensitive chemistry to analyze the cases, mainly sexual assault cases. We have very good databases to find reference samples, populations, data. But the sensitivity of the YSTRs uh, in, in contact, in touch stains, uh, uh, could help a lot of cases to be solved. A lot of uh, victims uh, could help, could, could get justice, and a lot of more cases can be, can be analyzed. The companies uh, uh, are much involved, produce uh, kits of high standards with 23, with 27, with more markers, also SNPs included sometimes. So the Y chromosome had a very good uh, uh, progress. Uh, and I think I followed this process in the last yeah, two decades. Yes, and as far as using a combination of YSTR markers plus autosomal markers yes. for these kinds of cases, you mentioned is really important. We think, uh, we showed in an empirical study of some hundreds of cases which we did um, for sexual assault um, um, stains uh, that we lose a lot of uh, information if we don't apply a dual workflow. So we apply in our institution uh, for all cases autosomal kit where we see a mixture between female and male DNA and uh, but often the male component is lost or suppressed and the Y uh, analysis, the Y kit uh, is not, uh, does not interfere with the yes. female DNA but yes. produces a, a nice uh, a male profile even from picogram, picogram of, of, of DNA. Yes. So both profiles together uh, uh, give us a full information from the victims, the female side, and from the male, the, the perpetrator side. Now what we want to avoid is to close the case if we see nothing in the autosomal setting. If we see nothing on the female, usually the case is closed. When we apply the same extract to a Y chromosomal STR, we have in 30% of cases a full profile. 30%? 30% more. So even in spermless cases where we have no sperm in the serological pretest, you see a y, uh, y profile. Oh. So we, we did it really in an empirical way. We, we have about 3 to 4% of all our cases are sexual assault. This is about 300 to 400 cases per year. And um, we evaluated since three years the outcome of this workflow. And this is the, this is the result. 30% uh, y chromosome profiles from, from negative sperm and negative autosomal male profiles. We um, said, okay, the Y is, is helping you to disentangle the mixture, but only with the new kids uh, you are able really to find it from one or two cells, which is sensitive enough now. So uh, it is, how to say, gratifying after so many years uh, to, the, to see the method now on, on, it, on, the, on its best performance, yeah? and that is yes. something rewarding. You know, in the U.S., you have a large backlog, uh, a backlog of anonymous uh, rape kits which are not analyzed, and we work together with the colleagues in America on a workflow um, which could uh, make these kits uh, analyzable uh, even 10, 15 years after they took the stains. And you cannot do microscopy, you cannot do serological pretest. So, yes. so it is a social uh, problem uh, helping the victims of the, out of the insecurity about their, about their um, evidence. Yeah. So, and it's the same in Europe. We have the same problem with backlogs. So old kids which have never been analyzed. I think uh, we should invest uh, money. The US uh, takes a decision to invest to reanalyze kids. And we are uh, the ones who provide the best practice protocols for yes. that. And uh, together maybe we can reduce or eliminate the backlog in the next two, three, four years. That's great. Thank you for taking the time to speak with us today. Thank you.